You know, this ear is flat there, round there, flat there. And it's got a little bit of character. It's better than just having that. Now we're going to get right back to the man, Ned Mueller. Ned, uh, welcome back. So you're ready to do some teaching. Yeah, yeah. Love to teach, Eric. Let's, Glad to be let's here. Do it. Let's do it. How many years have you been teaching, Ned? Uh, let's see. I started, actually, they had me teaching in art school. That was back in the uh, early 60s. Dark ages? So it's 60 okay. years, at least. Uh, 60 years. <laughs> so I acquired a lot of knowledge, experience, uh, and like to think a little bit of wisdom. Well, I, and we're going to get a little of that today. I was uh, just chatting about how you and I uh, met, and I was thinking about that. I went to an event the Plein Air Painters of America held, and uh, that event was in Old Lyme, Connecticut. And I did a painting with you kind of coaching me and a, and a bunch of others and uh, attended a workshop that you did there. And that was, gosh, that had to be 18, 20 years ago. So yeah. um, you'd only been teaching for 40 years at that time. I guess I need to go study with you again so I can learn all your 20 last 20 years of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I love to teach and I people say I've, I'm good at it. Well, you think, you know, after 60 years, you would, would you, be, you better be good at it after 60 years. Well, I'm going to let you go ahead and start teaching and, and you're going to demonstrate, uh, tell everybody the material you're using and tell, show them the crayon and so on. Okay. This is, if I can find where it is in the camera, there it is. This is what I'm using. It's, I've been using it since art school. Uh, it's Bestray Conti. I take a mat knife and I carve it down, you know, get, uh, there's a glare on, a gl gloss on it. I want to get rid of that, taper it off. And I use a sandpaper pad here to smooth it off and then you're ready to go the only other tool you need and i'm using smooth newsprint mainly because i've you know it's one of the few papers it's not archival that takes this the stray conti so well it's it's uh, the black conti doesn't work it's too greasy you can't erase it and you know i found this to be the best tool, particularly for portraits, because it's kind of related to a skin tone in a way. So it's user friendly that way. And it's easily erasable. You can smooth it. It's And the papers, uh, mainly I'm doing these, you know, for myself, you know, to sharpen my skills and sharpening your skills, sharpening your drawing skills improves your judgment. And that applies to a lot of things. And this is what this business is all about, is sharpening our knowledge, sharpening our judgment, and it also sharpens your taste. Uh, years ago, I had dinner with Richard Schmidt and always admired his work because it was so tasteful and wonderfully done. And I said, well, geez, Richard, was your mom an opera singer, your dad a, a violinist or something, or a surgeon? He said, no, I sharpened my judgment and taste through drawing. And so that's, luckily, some of us love to draw. You know, some of us, you know, abhor to avoid it at all costs. But even in getting into abstract modern art, you find those people that, that have some skills, that can draw well, have good judgment. And that applies to all sorts of work, classical, traditional, impressionistic, modern. So that's why I feel drawing is important. Anyways, I'll get started with this and uh, doing a portrait of this Chinese gentleman that uh, took a painting trip and did a workshop in Ch China some years ago. And it's a good example uh, because it's strong light and shadow. Now, I just kind of get a tone down the paper, just, just get it down, you know, it's... Uh, you know, mess it up a little bit. And one important thing, people always say, oh, you know, how do I loosen up? Well, see, I'm just holding the 
Conti like this, and I'm drawing from my shoulder, what happens is people get up here like this and they're drawing piece by piece and then things fall apart because if it's drawn from your shoulder, you know, I'm arms, arms length away from my drawing or painting or whatever already. So I got a little distance. So I'm gonna just get a general shape of that head. And the more you do this, the more you're gonna get more accurate you know, the first time you do this. And I'm gonna get a little bit more tone. The other thing is a lot of people, uh, it's particularly beginners, uh, they get, they don't get their darks dark enough. If you don't get your darks dark enough, you're forced to use too much white. And if you can see the skin tone, on the, it's, it's a number about a number two value. So that really helps to get a, a tone in for the skin tones, you know, and you don't have to stay within the lines. Actually, it's better that we don't. So I get, get that covered. And I got a pretty good, pretty good uh, shape already. But what, what you want to do is you want to get something down. So you don't know if you got something right you know, until until you got it down so you can see whether it's right or wrong. Um, so do that loosely and freely. This, I want to get the hat on him. That hat is important. It explains the shape of that forehead and the top of his head. And so see, I'm just... I'm just Lucy. I'm not concerned about every little thing. I'm just looking for the big rhythm and movement in the hat, you know, even in the head. Uh, proportion wise, uh, you know, you generally, generally speaking, from the top of the head, you know, you can't see it with a hat, the top of the head to the chin, the lines of the eyes is halfway. And these are kind of generic terms, but they're really, really helpful because they're easy to remember. So from the line of the eyes to the chin is the line of the nose. Now that's, these are generic kind of average things, but they're easy to remember. And then from the line of the nose to the chin is the line of the mouth. And I, what I'm looking at, and, and I'm using my judgment, I'm looking at these distances that uh, are they, are they what, are they close to that? Or what I'm doing is using my judgment to find the line of that eyes, the placement of that eye. You know, he's got an extra long nose. This area here is a little bit shorter than half in the chin kind of down here. So I got that in pretty good the first time. And just like anything else, um, if you do a lot of these things or do a lot of anything, you're going to get good at it. So it's just, it's just mostly mileage. So I got that roughed in. Get a little bit. I'm also trying to not just make a portrait, but to kind of compose it. So it's a little more interesting and in putting darks and lights in certain areas. So it's just not a, a plain, plain old portrait. So now I got all that tone on there and I'm gonna get in this and I'm more or less just drawing the shadow shape. And what I'm, going to do is I'm mostly going to, I'm working from large to small. And if you get the shadow shape right on a portrait, you're going to get a likeness. That theory kind of being, if you saw your, one of your friends, you know, down the block um, and it couldn't see any details, but all you could see even on overcast day, you could see the, the darks and lights of their face and you knew it was them because of that. It's the same 
same kind of theory in portraits. Those, those big shadow shapes are important because they are totally related to that face. And this is the time too to make make uh, make a judgment adjustments and changes as we go along. So I'm just blocking in these big shapes. Like the side of his nose is not really in shadow. It's more of a half tone. And the side plane of his head over there is a little darker value. And this is all in shadow. Sometimes you just have to stop to check and double check things. I was a carpenter and it's kind of drawing, you know, it's a lot like that. Uh, check and double check. Like where his eyebrows are, how far up his forehead. So I got to move that hat up a little bit. Good time to. Amazing how make. you got such a good likeness so quickly. Yeah, and that mainly is because of the shadow shapes are accurate. There's no detail. You know, a lot of people just stop with this and often we probably should because, you know, we've captured kind of the essence. But I'm gonna carry it a little bit farther. Get a little bit of tone. The other thing is, um, we get deceived by values. Uh, you know, you see the light. Remember I put that value and it looked pretty, pretty dark. But uh, uh, it's a lot darker than you think. If we put a white sheet, let's see, we put something like this, see the tone of the paper. Now that's white. You know, not even, oh, even in the picture, that highlight on his nose is just about what, what we have on this sheet here. And so we need, to, we need to be able to orchestrate all that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in now and get a little bit more darkness in here. I kind of got an overall value. Also time to, you know, good time to work on a few edges. And the hat is nice because it defines the shape of the head. Or at least the upper shape, you know, or even a collar, a collar here shows that the neck is round. You get that to go behind him. See that shadow shape defines that top plane of his mouth. How it crosses here, dips in here rather thinly, and then back into here. The other thing too, with, with experience, uh, I encourage people to try different papers, different things. Everybody's different in what works for them. Papers can really be critical. You know, how smooth are they? Hey, Ned. 
Yeah. When you're yeah, uh, I, painting a portrait, do you draw it out first? Uh, I did. When you're draw painting it out. a portrait, do you draw it out first? Uh, I think that's what I just did. No, when you're painting. Oh, when I'm painting. Yeah. Uh, pretty much the same way, Eric. Yeah, okay. I'll block it in the big shapes. You know, um, I won't. But do you draw it? Uh, yeah, to, to me that that's drawing. I guess I guess I'm misunderstanding what you mean by drawing. Do you draw with a, a crayon or chalk or charcoal or something uh, before? Oh, no, uh, no, I see what you're getting at. No, when I'm painting, I use painting a brush of a brush. person, or do you draw with? Yeah, I'll I'll draw it in with a brush. Use use a. A, a fairly light tone and draw it in with a brush because that's what I'm using. I used to be, it was more lack, lack of confidence. I would draw it in with a Conti or a charcoal or a pencil, but I found I'm going to paint it in paint. And so I probably should draw it in with paint, you know, and I, and I, and plus using a brush, there's an old saying, when you, when you draw, you paint, and that means you're drawing it, but you're painting because you're painting shapes and values. And then when you paint, you draw. When you're painting this eye socket with a dark tone, you got to also be aware of the drawing. Where, where does that socket come across here? Where does the shadow of that eye go there? So you're, so you're, I think, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And see, there's sharp edges and soft edges. And all those add up. But see, I'm, I'm not looking for detail. I'm looking more for shapes kind of also, you know, thinking of muscles and particularly planes of the head. You know, our light is coming from up above and over here. So you can remember that. So any, any plane like that forehead's pretty light is turned up to the light. Any plane turned away, like underneath the cheek here has gone darker. The other thing is, I'm going to get that nose a little bit darker. This side of the head, that is turned away, you know, so it looks often it'll look lighter than this side because it's surrounded by dark. So that's something we have to be aware of. So, and working from the photo throws things off. So when I'm working from, from um, I've worked from life, you know, for 60 years. And as an illustrator, I've also trained how, how to use a photo. So, you know, I'm doing another class and workshops at cover a lot of that, but it's important, important to get all these values orchestrated. We can see it right now as, you know, because I took the time to get these values a little more accurate. You know, nothing's ever going to be perfect. And far as two backgrounds, people are always asking about backgrounds. So I you know, a general rule is that what I'll use is just I'll, I'll get a little dark up here. And that's just, I'm trying to create a work of art too. So I'm trying to get some interesting shapes. I'm trying to uh, make things, some things darker, some things lighter to make it a more better portrait. And I'll employ a little bit of line. 
So I'm thinking of the whole the whole composition. You know, I don't really want that shadow that dark and reality it wouldn't be that dark now. So I'm just right now I'm just gonna make it get a shape down there. And it's, if it's getting a little too heavy over here, I can where that shoulder is. You make sure you, see this is higher than this. You see where that's coming into the chin there. So I could I could get a little bit of dark in here. And then that get dark down there. And a good time too, maybe to bring out, but see, I can use that tone that I put on there. I wanna keep my eye up in here. And do I want my, I don't want my eye to get over here. The other thing with, with uh, ears, and we don't have time to go into all the generic ears and everything. But I, this is an interesting shape over here. So it's getting a lot of attention. So all I have to do is put a little bit of tone on that. And that there again, then gets my eye over here. I'm gonna put a little bit of, just a little bit of light, just to gauge my value range. And you know, you just, we just have that kind of abstracted in. We get a light there, light there. And it really starts, Conti's are very easily breakable, almost. Yeah. I'm there. I really get frustrated. So you just get a few, a few highlights like that, and it kind of becomes magical. But it becomes magical because we got the other big things right. Hey, Ned. Yeah, Eric. Somebody commented that your work looks a lot like Nikolai Feshin. I think you have a a passion for Russian painting. And uh, didn't you study under a Russian for a while? Yeah, I did. Uh, uh, Sergei Bongard. It's, it's wow. coincidence. You know me too well, Eric. And <laughs> I was just about ready to mention him. One thing he would say, which is, uh, one of my favorite saying is, don't paint the flea before you've painted the dog. <laughs> and I think that's a great comment. It's... Uh, but yeah, he, he was a great colorist. I mean, all, all the Russians, they got such great training. Yeah. And I was lucky to get great training. I went to the Art Center School in uh, Los Angeles and all those teachers were working professionals. So we, uh, we kind of, they, they kind of knew what we needed to learn. And even with that, you know, uh, I look back, I wish I would have paid more attention to some of the instructors I had. Some nice reflected light, and that's where the lighting the lighting gets can get um, deceiving. So we, you know, we have to know when to darken or lighten things. The other thing is, you know, when you're blocking in. In a hit like this, you know, you just block it in like that. But then towards the end, 
you want to see the little things like that comes in like that and then comes out like that. And this cheekbone kind of squares off there and kind of comes in here. And then I can just soften that. So what I'm saying, even with a hat to block, it's got a little bit of character. You know, often a lot of curves are made up of a series of flat lines. So take advantage of those subtle changes. You know, we're just the shape of that shadow there and how it comes over. Uh, all that is in important because that that can take just a so-so drawing and when you pay attention to those little shapes and I'm I'm not I'm kind of jumping the gun here a little bit but I wanted to talk about that because it's important the shapes of this you know this ear is flat there round there flat there and it's got a little bit of character it's better than just having that. And even here, that, that could be flat there, round there, comes out there. And I wanted to comment on that because it can take just an average drawing into a great drawing, paying attention to those little subtleties. And that takes a while to get to that point. But there again, you go back to getting getting these big, big relationships. So I can easily go back and, and correct things. Don't be afraid to take out big, big areas with, with, uh, flat side of your eraser. I got to put a new, got a new eraser out. So this was the old one. I mean, that gets pretty, pretty grimy. So I did that just for you, Eric. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, Eric, you owe me a dinner or something. I, I, I'd happily buy you a dinner, Ned. <laughs> you're, you're safe because we hardly ever see each other anymore. I know, I know. Well, I might just show up in Seattle. Okay, I invited you last time. I know. I have, well, you know, we've been in lockdown. Oh, yeah, well, you know, we're one of the less, hardly anybody's wearing a mask anymore because of my autoimmune disease. I have to. Uh, but yeah, we would go to Wyoming, Montana a few months ago and nobody had a mask. But everybody here was wearing a mask. And so we're one of the least uh, population that is getting the disease because I think that had a lot to do with it. Well, I have to get out there. I just don't know when. Yeah, uh, we're getting some beautiful, today it's supposed to get up to over 90. Oh, lovely. It's, been, well, it's been, been that hot here in the Adirondacks. Yeah, that's pretty hot here. And, you know, the yeah. climate change, last seven years, we've been getting better summers in California. Uh, so you're um, not getting as much rain? Yeah, a couple of years ago, we went 90 straight days without rain. And this, that's unheard of. Well, maybe I'll bring my motor home out. Oh, that's right. You told me you, you, you got one last time. I haven't hardly used it, but um, I'm, I'm anxious to. I just can't get any time off. You know, the, the demands of these shows, I've, I'm trying to figure out how I can uh, uh, get a satellite connection in the RV so I can do the show from the RV. Oh, wow. Wow. That's great. Because what you're doing with these is wonderful, Eric. Uh, you know, and offering these 
free, I think, is really, really great. It's, you know, so many people just can't afford art school, you know, at the high expenses. Well, and the wonderful thing is that a lot of people have picked up drawing and painting who never thought they could because they got the confidence from watching. Yeah, yeah. And then if they want to take it further, you know, we have, we have of course, hundreds of videos and workshops online so people can take it further if they want to. Yeah. All, all professionally produced, unlike these. Okay, Eric, how much time we got? Uh, well, if we're going to show your other slides, you've got about five or six minutes. Okay. All right. Um, probably a good time. So I'm at the stage where I'm just sharpening it up. But we gotta got to remember, you know, how we started out with big, big, pretty much big, simple shapes. You know, working from large to small for the most part, and mostly also dark to light. Um, but now I'm just adding a few highlights. Uh, so I have to tighten up a little bit, not doing so much from my shoulder anymore. But that, uh, like I said, a lot of people want to loosen up. And the simple thing, even with your painting, is just, you know, hold your brush arm's length. Uh, draw from your shoulder, your body. You know, that lets, you know, I don't want to sound corny, but that lets your your spirit, your feeling come through. If you're up here tightening up, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, I started out like that and I learned I put every little detail, every leaf on a tree and every shingle on a, on a house. Uh, and, but, but I hadn't been exposed to good art, you know, I didn't know how to create it, you know. Um, so that, that really, really can make a difference. At least it's, it's awkward at first, you know, it's, it's just, um, um, just like anything new, give it a try and you know, don't get discouraged at first. You know, goes back to the little, with the little, uh, the little engine that could, you know, you just, just keep trying. Don't get discouraged. And I think you've pointed out a couple of very important things. So first off, go to museums, look at paintings all the time, and it will, as Richard Schmidt talked about refining your taste, uh, that's one way to refine your taste as well as drawing. Uh, and, and focus on big shapes. Start with big shapes. Like you said, paint the dog before the flea. I like to say, bake the cake and then put the icing on. Yeah, that's a good one. Can I use that? Uh, yes, of course. Okay, you can't use my dog one, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyways, um, that's, I'm trying to think of what else I can say. You know, I talked about, you know, using a little bit of line. Um, they're again, trying to make this kind of a work of art, you know, where I put lights and darks, you know, that's some reflected light. Um, how to be careful reflected light. It always looks, looks lighter than what it should be. So I'll take it out with a the racer then rub it in so it doesn't become too destructive or too distracting, sorry. Actually both. You know, uh, somebody told me, my, one of my instructors years ago said, when you're learning to draw fa faces, do not draw people you know, because you, you can't look at them objectively. Yeah, yeah, I have. I found that out. Uh, one of our best teachers at uh, Art Center was John Legata. Was a famous illustrator way back in the twenties and thirties, a first illustrator and make a million dollars. Any, anyways, he he. Uh, uh, oh gosh, what was I going to say? Um, he We're was talking about likenesses. 
people you yeah. know. Yeah, and uh, he was a great artist. Just he he was known as the famous. Oh, I can't say it. I'm, <laughs> but he just did beautiful women, just gorgeous. And we he invited us over to his house once, and he had a portrait of his his wife in there, and it just wasn't the same. I've seen a lot of other portrait artists doing somebody they love. It just didn't come off. And I've painted, drawn, drawn Cairn five or six times. And I, I've gotten a couple good ones, but there's something there. You know, we're even trying too hard. Uh, I, I don't know what it is, but it blocks something inside of us. So what I, I think what you're saying is very true. Yeah, I don't even attempt to do that, it, you know, because then I get criticized. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you made my eyes too big or, you know, whatever. So I, I think it's right now it's just better not to do that as I learn. Yeah. Yeah. How would, uh, here's a question from Kimberly Panfill who says, how would you do the forehead wrinkles and frown lines between the brows, lines and shadows? Uh, yeah, just... Uh... I was going to get into that and see they're pretty dark. So you don't want them to stand out. So you, you can't make them as dark as they look. Just make those darks a little bit and don't copy them so much. Just, you know, and put in about half of them because you don't want to ruin a beautiful drawing with all those, those lines. See, that's almost that's almost enough and I would I'd have to go in and fine tune all that but there again just let's see the light is hitting there and there there again you don't want a straight line across there you just yeah. kind of want to hit it and that's probably enough all right now Ned do you want to get uh, we need to get your slides pulled up I'm not sure where they are but uh, it's about time to go into that. Um, the question is, do you have any helpful tips on self-portraits from Lama, uh, Lama Deeb? Um, well, I never did any until about a year ago. Really? Yeah. You know, I just never, <laughs> never did any. I probably the only portrait, well, I don't consider myself a portrait artist. I'm an artist that does portraits and landscapes and figures, but um, no, I, I I don't know what to say about that. Uh, right. One I did that turned out the best, actually Karen had started it. Hmm. And uh, she was more trained in fine arts and, and stuff. So she, so I just went in and kind of finished it up. And I, I don't even know if we have it in the slideshow, but it turned out to be one of my better... Act not just a portrait of me, but one of my better portraits. Well, can you ask her to pull up the slideshow? Because I'm not seeing it yet. Okay. We like your studio. It looks really messy. It's an organized mess, we like to call it. <laughs> uh, it's gone, Eric. It was up here. It was gone. Okay. Well... Uh, these things happen. So let me just show a couple of things because I do have a couple of images that Ned provided. I, Eric, I can hold some up. Oh, yeah, good. That's even better. Okay, so, here's what this style of each and technique is. There's like a value study for a boat painting. Same technique using the Bistre Conti, just orchestrating the darks of life. No, oh, you would use that for, for a studio painting to work out all the things you want to work out? Yeah, yeah. The value studies uh, are important. It, it, I'm applying the principles and elements of design using overlaps, uh, tangents, uh, uh, spacing, and all those things, rhythm and movement. That's what I'm doing in the value study, working on design. Like this one here. I used about five or six photos, combined them, ah. to put that scene together. And um, that's kind of that's kind of what I'm going to be 
talking mostly about in Realism Live. Oh, good. Well, what I'd like to just show me real quickly on that, Ned, just say, show me what came, don't show me the photos, but show me the different pieces that came from different photos. Oh, you mean on the last one? Yeah. Okay. So the main, I usually find a main figure or something, and that was the woman. She had this beautiful old bag. It was at the um, uh, Camel Fair, famous Camel Fair in Rajasthan, India. So I had her, I took pictures of the tents, found this great white tent with goofy shapes and stuff around, you know, added the little figure behind her. And, and there were horses there also, not only camels, but I felt I needed that little dark over there to fill that void up. And so I put a, just put a horse looking the other way. And then I'll, I'll, I'll have pictures of paraphernalia or if I'm in a market, uh, vegetables, you know, things that I can use for the composition. You know, they're again, trying to orchestrate, you know, the darks, the lights and the midtones. It really saves a lot of trouble because you're designing this, you're getting your ideas down. Mainly you can see what's working and isn't, you know, see like over, over here, you know, that bag goes over that distant mountain you know, it could have been a bad tangent. Yeah. You no, know, so that's, I'm just looking at this and it's amazing people want to know about design, but, you know, they don't even know what the principles and elements of design are. And they're there to make a painting better if we use them. So that's what I'm going to be talking about with Realism Live and into more detail. And I, I wanted to do one of these you know, and the free art school thing too, because I think it's important. Yeah. So okay. I thought I'd see that down the road. Here's here's one I just did. You know, had this great photo of some horses. Nice. Ooh. Shadow. And I added Ooh, I like that. And I added the the figure from another photo. And I made up I made up the background. You know, when you and I first met, we painted horses together. Well, yeah, I mean, you were off in the field there. It was all over, and I saw this artist standing out there all by himself, the only artist left, and I thought, well, I better go. He's that dedicated. I better go over and see if I can, you know, give him any good advice. And, and nothing yeah, would have, nothing would help at that stage. I was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, you've always had it in your heart. That's that's, you know, that's the main important thing, you know, if we, people that do this just sheer for the joy, you know, they're yep. not in it trying to make a living. And I envy them. I'm kind of at that place now because I've, I've done all the thing. I've accomplished everything I pretty much want to. So now I'm just doing things that I love to do. And that's yeah. a nice spot to be in. I don't have to worry about selling or anything. And only got a few years left anyway, so I'm oh, stop. <laughs> trying to have as much fun as I can. Let me Absolutely. show you one. One more. One more. This, this, yeah, this is just a coastal scene. But oh, that's remember, beautiful. The key is being able to see that. When I'm outside looking around, I'm looking, I'm not looking so much as a mountain trees and stuff like that. I'm looking for interesting shapes and, or something that I, I think that I can change and, and make it a better, you know, more work of art. So just that seeing, and the more you draw, the more you do these things, the better your eye gets, whether you get taking photos, or anything else. When I take a photo, I try to make it a work of art. And there again, it takes time to get a good eye. Sure Some does. people are born with it, but you know, and like you say, looking at good art, you know, if you can, you know, Bill Reese told me, say, there's two kinds of art. There's good art and bad art. Well, I, I don't think it's that black and white. 
but uh, yeah, look at good art, you know, find out what good art is. And I, I, I'm not going to, my definition of a good drawing or painting, it's an interesting, compelling arrangements of shapes, colors, and edges. That applies to abstract, classical, everything. It's not the best, you could add texture, but you know, teaching, I have to put things in words. So that's the best I can do. All right. Well, I, I found also that uh, what I liked, what I was drawn to when I first started painting changed dramatically as I painted more. I, my level of sophistication grew, hopefully. And yeah. the things that I was attracted to, I was initially attracted to things that were almost photorealistic and very, very tight. And then at, the more I paint, the more interested I am on the you know, the broken edges and the interesting brushwork and the, just the really abstract design. Right. Yeah, that's exactly. And uh, yeah, you've, and you've been in a great spot. You can, I mean, you've been able to talk to and see and hang around with some of the best artists in the world. I mean, it's what a wonderful experience. It's been, it's been wonderful. Well, Ned, thank you so much for being on. We're looking forward to seeing you and, and what you're going to teach on Realism Live. Uh, for those of you who missed that, that is uh, four days, three days of, uh, of uh, content for Realism Live. And then there's an optional fourth day, which is a beginner's day, which we do first to help people get a little bit more comfortable if they're brand new. But you can do this, right? Ed, Ned, they can, they can do it. Yeah, that's right. Can I, can I throw in my uh, website? Yes, uh, we we put it in the in the in the comments section, but yes, absolutely. Oh, great! Well, it's just www.nedmuller.com, and I list all my workshops and things like that on it. And you guys need to go take Ned's workshops. I need to do it too. So uh, go do it. <laughs> all right, Eric. Uh, Thank you, well, Ned. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure.